What's up? It's Flamingo Joe here. Today we're going to be doing what I like to call a shallow dive. It'll be similar to a deep dive, but I'm only going to be looking at the surface level details about our subject matter. Today we're going to be talking about Escape the Back Rooms. The early access game developed and published by Fancy Games and released on August 11th, 2022. Escape the Back Rooms takes its theme, setting, and gameplay from the internet mythos of the back rooms, as well as the Kane Pixels YouTube miniseries. We're going to be discussing the accuracy to the original lore, as well as some of the liberties that Fancy Games took in order to bring us this challenging game. So first we're going to discuss what the wiki says about the level, and then we're going to move into what the game does that's true to the lore, and then we're going to discuss where the game differs or relates to the Kane Pixels series. Alright, and with that we're going to jump right into the first level, which is ironically level 0. Level 0, aka the lobby, refers to the first level of the backrooms, often described as a dingy and musty backroom of a department store, with a yellow hue enveloping the seemingly endless and ever-changing rooms. The floor is a damp and almost molded carpet with droll repeating wallpaper to complement it. Fluorescent lights cover the ceiling with a constant droning that is louder than your typical fluorescent light. The game seems to capture this perfectly, the only major difference being that level 0 is described by the wiki as being devoid of entities and being mostly safe other than the lack of food and drinkable water. In the game, there is an entity with long slender limbs standing at around 10 feet tall. This entity is most likely Bacteria, an entity from Kane Pixels series on the Backrooms. Kane Pixels created his own miniseries around the Backrooms on YouTube, and if you haven't seen it yet, you should really check it out. After escaping level 0 through a hole in the wall up a ladder, another call back to Kane Pixel series, you'll find yourself in level 1, the Habitable Zone. The Habitable Zone is a massive warehouse with concrete floors and walls. Exposed rebar, dim fluorescent lights placed on the wall, and a low hanging fog with no discernible source. Unlike level 0, this level possesses a consistent supply of water and electricity which allows for indefinite habitation by wanderers, providing that appropriate precautions are taken. It is also far more expansive, possessing staircases, elevators, isolated rooms, and hallways. The fluorescent lights at any time can flicker and turn off for minutes or even hours. When this occurs, hostile entities may appear. In the game, level 1 is shown to be similar to this description, having a gameplay mechanic where you must reach lighted hallways when the lights in the large area flicker off. This is in order to avoid the entities. That's about where the similarities end. In the wiki, the aptly named Habitable Zone is an area where, you guessed it, is habitable, with many factions ultimately settling here due to the abundance of water and other fresh supplies. In the game, there seems to be no factions or any other humans, but there are entities. The entities you encounter in the game are referred to as Smilers, which is interesting to note because, according to the wiki, you shouldn't run into any Smilers until level 2. One of the possible entrances to level 2 is through an unlocked door found in level 1, which the game does stay faithful to. Level 2, aka Pipe Dreams, is described by the wiki as consisting of long, dim, concrete hallways, with steam pipes lining the walls and ceilings. Doors are rarely found, housing metal shelves and ventilation ducts. It is described as being generally more decayed than the previous levels. Level 2 is where the danger really ramps up, with a survival difficulty rating of 2. There is often several different types of entities that are extremely aggressive and murderous towards explorers. If spotted, your best bet is to run, though depending on the entity, it may not matter. The game has long piped corridors that seem to go on forever, staying true to the wiki's description. Once you reach a certain point, you will begin to be chased by a smiler, which do appear on this level in the lore. The only way to survive this is to run for your life until you see flashing lights on your right. Your best bet is to turn off into this room, and this will take you into level fun. This is another liberty taken by the devs, as usually level 2 will lead directly into level 3 via a fire exit. Level fun is actually a sublevel and is therefore not numbered in the lore. It takes the appearance of a children's birthday party room, having colorful table settings, what appears to be cake, and murals painted on the wall. Level Fun is the main habitat and the main base of the partygoers. Partygoers often turn their victims into meat cakes. Due to the partygoers advanced knowledge of no clipping to the point of creating quantum tunnels to find their prey, there are massive numbers of entrances and exits to Level Fun, 
and one never quite knows if they've entered one or not. Level Fun is large but finite, at around 120,000 square miles of space. Party goers are virtually everywhere in this level, and can be found either out in the open or behind constructed cover. Nowhere is safe. Level Fun is anything but fun. In the game, you'll be greeted to large amounts of party goers at around every corner. Your only way to avoid being turned into a meat cake is to sneak, run, and hide. The floor is a bright confetti patterned carpet and the walls are covered in red wallpaper resembling a Chuck E. Cheese birthday party room. The game differs in its lack of human meat cakes, which is disappointing to say the least. Eventually you'll find the exit after running through some narrow corridors which will lead you into level 37. In the lore it's stated that there are numerous exits out of level fun so it's not too much of a stretch to say that one could lead to level 37. Level 37, aka Sublimity, aka The Pool Rooms, is an expansive complex of interconnected rooms and corridors slightly submerged in undulating, lukewarm water. Each area of the level varies greatly in size and structure, ranging from uniform pools and hallways to more open, abnormally shaped areas. The walls, ceilings, and floors of the level all appear to be constructed of the same white ceramic tile with the only deviation from the color being the blue-green hue of the water. Level 37 seems to be one of the most peaceful rooms, with no entities and the only danger being the Hydrolytus Plague, please excuse me if I'm mispronouncing that, which is a bacteria that only forms in the lowest and darkest depths of level 37. So, as long as you stay away from the darker parts of level 37, it should almost simulate a relaxing day at the spa. The game stays very faithful to this, the only danger is being some of the deeper, darker pools, which will kill you instantly upon contact, as well as some of the darker rooms, which will kill you if you hang around them for too long. You'll continue through the pool rooms until coming across a red door which will then lead you into a level that is actually possible to find yourself in at any point in your backroom's excursion. Level Run For Your Life Level Run For Your Life Really enjoy the uh, naming here, <laughs> consists of a long hallway approximately 10 kilometers long, with its structure resembling that of a hospital. The hallway has several doors, each one approximately 3 meters from the other. There are also bright, flickering exit signs for the entirety of the level, each one about 10 meters from each other. Upon entry, one will immediately notice the loud alarm sound with no apparent source. A few seconds after entering the level, one will notice a horde of entities, Hounds, skin stealers, and facelings, etc. The apparent objective is to escape the level as fast as one possibly can before it's too late. This level has the highest difficulty class of 5. One can enter this level through any level of the back rooms when it's least expected. The game has you running through an apparent abandoned hospital with red light covering the entirety of the level, most likely trying to reuse assets, as neither smilers nor party goers are typically found on this level. To make it through, you'll have to run and dodge through falling medical equipment and opening doors to make it to the end, which will lead to the end. No, that's the actual name of the level. It's, yeah. The end is commonly referred to as a trap level, meant to mislead wanderers into thinking that they have escaped the back rooms. The layout of the end consists of a seemingly endless modern library, with the main area in the center decorated with letters reading THE END. Wanderers who enter this level will experience nearly complete silence, with some areas measuring below negative 6.2 decibels. The center region of the level is nearly as silent as the rest, though the computer terminals within buzz loudly. It is recommended to stay in this area and not explore further to avoid getting lost. It is rumored that this level will eventually transition into the true exit. In the game, you enter an area that resembles this description. There is, however, an entity which differs from the wiki. The entity is a large, maybe 9 foot tall, all black creature with extended arms and legs, and is heard shushing constantly. The creature is blind, but can hear the slightest movements, so be careful. You must collect 24 VHS tapes around the library while avoiding the entity. After collecting the tapes, you must approach the terminal in the center of the room in order for it to turn on. Once the terminal is turned on, a tape will begin playing, and the monster will dissipate. The tape shows examples of Jungian psychology and the relationship between the conscious and unconscious mind. This goes on for about two minutes until a... 
portal opens up. You'll enter the portal, which will take you into level 9223372036854775807. Woo! Did that in one take. This is also known as the final true level. It is the signed 64 integer limit on a computer. It is one of the most mysterious locations currently known in the back rooms. Although most would say that the back rooms are infinite, those that have been to this level would disagree. Those that have managed to reach this level have not been able to go higher for years, and for some, even millennia. Time works differently in the back rooms. Not only is this level one of the most dangerous levels in the back rooms, it is one of the hardest to enter. The only way one can properly describe the surroundings of this level is a simple, cold, brutalist staircase, about 29 steps tall. This leads upward to an end. The color of the end is not humanely describable. The most one can compare it to is black or white. It is void of any color, so empty looking at it directly for too long can make one begin to cry. Nobody knows if there is anything after this. At least there is no way to get there if so. In the game, this serves as the final level. You'll continue up indefinitely until eventually you get bored and decide to try and jump, or maybe you'll just fall on accident like I did. This allows you to exit and finish the game after falling for a decent amount of time depending on how high up you went. There is no indescribable color void, and there's much more than 29 steps. When you fall through the true final level, you'll wake up to your alarm clock. Get out of bed and peer outside, only to see an unsettling view of disjointed houses. This closely resembles the description of... Level 94 appears to be a large town, a floating castle in grass hills, but everything has a grainy effect, as if the place was crafted. While we only get a sneak peek at this level, I'm hoping that this will be one of the future levels coming up with the game's updates. And with that, we've reached the end of our video. Escape the Backrooms was clearly made with devotion towards the original lore and Kane Pixels miniseries, staying mostly faithful to both sources. I'm incredibly excited to see what this game has in store for us next, and I may just have a few ideas of some of the next levels you will hopefully see in the near future. Make sure to subscribe to see that. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment what you thought about the video. This has been Flamingo Joe, and I'll see you guys next time.